until you get it. Oops. Uh oh. That's okay. Hi everyone, um, welcome to the webinar. It is our summer series, Advice for New Teachers from UTA Grads. And excuse the date, it's actually June 28th, 1 to 2 p.m. Central Standard Time, Advice for New Teachers. Recordings will be available of the webinar and no names will be visible in the recording, just so you know. We've got two of our speakers here, um, Nellie and Marinthia. And we're going to jump right into our content. So welcome to everyone. And then just as a disclaimer, these are our own opinions and suggestions. They don't represent the viewpoints of UT Arlington, nor the Department of Curriculum Instruction. They're our own individual views. Our goal is for you to hear a variety of voices to help support people into your first years of teaching. Um, we've been down the road you're going, and we just want to offer support, respect, dialogue, and sharing. We encourage you to contribute to the chat window. So if you're on the webinar, you can type in the chat window comments or questions along the way. You can also do emoticons. So you can do happy faces or thumbs up um, next to your name. You can do the thumbs up symbol or a virtual applause. So if you want to uh, comment that way, you can do, do so. And we want these to be open access and mobile access, Web 2.0, meaning we will share and post them in various places like um, Facebook, YouTube, uh, a mixed cloud podcast channel. And we want real world advice. We're not going to give you theory on here. We're going to give you from the trenches advice. So again, um, af after the webinar, at a later date, we will post this to YouTube and share it publicly. First, it will be posted to Mixcloud as a podcast, and then we will also post updates to our Facebook page, facebook.com slash UTA New Teacher Project, and we encourage you to like that page and visit it. Again, that's facebook.com, UTA New Teacher Project. So logistics to maximize learning, you can ask questions in the chat window. Our main Q&A is at the end, but feel free to type in. And our panelists will check and monitor the chat window and see if there's any questions that they can answer on the, on the spot. You might want to take notes or make a list of things to look up. We might share websites or names of books or things like that. And use the chat window often, and we'll check the chat window. Join us for our upcoming events. We've got a um, couple things. We've got the July 28th screening of the Dyslexia movie from 1 to 2.30. And then we also have a webinar on dyslexia on August 2nd, um, speakers to be announced. So those are all opportunities to join us again. So where are you now? Go ahead and type in the chat window where you are or mark it on the, on the using the pen tool on the map. So use the marker pen tool to put a small X below where you are at. You can also type it in the chat window. So let's give everyone about 30 seconds to do that. We've got someone joining from Las Vegas. We've got a question for our panelists. Um, and we'll keep this in mind. They may, they may have time to respond to it while they're talking. Somebody wants to know, what are some regrets you have made in your first years of teaching or things you wish you didn't do? I think they'll share some of that. So let's see where we're at. We've got West Virginia. A lot of us are in the Metroplex, Grand Prairie, Arlington, um, and Irving. And I'm in Bedford. OK, great. Thanks for sharing where you're at. And let's keep going. So take the poll. Where are you in your teaching career? Um, you can vote next to the hand tool in the participants window. So the participants window is the bottom left corner of your screen. And there's a box that says A, B, C, D, E. And let's wait till most of us have voted. I am currently a pre-service teacher, B, first through third year teacher, and UTA grad, first through third year teacher, non-UTA grad, D, fourth year plus teacher, or E, faculty or none of the above. 
see where most of us are at. I think many of us have voted, but I'll give us a, a little bit more time to vote. And use the voting tool next to the hand. It's a drop-down menu, and it's in the participants window. OK, let's publish these results. OK, so we're kind of a mix. So mostly we are first through third year teachers, or fourth year teachers, or faculty. Great. So here's our panelists, um, and we want to give them a big welcome. Let's give them a virtual round of applause. You can do happy face in the chat window, or you, there's a virtual round of applause tool below the participants window. So welcome, everyone, and thanks for joining us. So first up is Marinthia. Marinthia, I'm going to let you take over from here. So I'm going to turn it over to you, and we'll see what advice you have for us. So I'll let you um, press the talk button, see if you're there. Let's see. I don't see Marinthia. She was just here, and I think she's going to rejoin us. So I think I may go to Nellie. Nellie, go ahead and um, press the talk button, and we'll jump ahead to you. Okay. Hi. Hi. And um, let me just jump ahead to your slide. Okay. Go for it. When Marinthia rejoins us, we'll go back to hers. Okay. Um, well, hi, everyone. My name is Nellie. And, um, I'm very happy to be here. Um, I'm currently working on my master's in curriculum and instruction with reading emphasis. And um, I am a UCA grad, but I couldn't get enough, so I had to go back. <laughs> um, I do. I am certified in bilingual, EC36, and I'm currently working with um, well, bilingual population, ESL, and at risk students. So I guess real quick, here we go. Uh, so what has worked well? Uh, for me and my teaching is just really getting to know your students. Uh, that's always the key. Every year will be different, so don't expect I guess, uh, the same outcome every year. Uh, so really get to express your students, to know them, and just modify your instruction. And um, one important thing is to be an avid reader, to always be in the known of uh, new curriculum, uh, books, etc. For me, I've always loved reading, so it's, it just kind of comes natural. Um, another good thing is just to always express your love for, for teaching or for reading or whatever might your, your passion be because your students really feed off a lot, um, a lot on that, I guess. Um, it's also good to have a good communication with the parents. Um, you know, give them, you know, your, pretty much your guidelines, your, you know, how they can contact you. And give them, you know, time to express their, you know, their concerns or their needs, um, and that really helps out make your your year go a lot easier. So working closely also with your team uh, to make sure that your curriculum is aligned and that you guys are all pretty much on the same page really helps, uh, you know, your first year or any year really go a lot easier. Any questions up until now? <laughs> You guys let me know if I'm going too fast. <laughs> You're doing great. Thanks. <laughs> okay. So, um, any help? Um, what, what I usually do to, if I do have any questions uh, about my teaching, my go-to person, my first year was really my mentor. So, um, I recommend you know working with your mentor closely and um, observing them because. That uh, will help you, you know, transition into your own classroom. Uh, don't be afraid to, to ask someone to say, hey, how can you do this? Can you demonstrate it? For me, I'm, I'm a visual learner, so it really helps me to ask, can you give me an example? Or can I observe you for a couple of minutes while you do a mini lesson? So that's always a great thing to do. Uh, the next person that I would go to would be like a grade level leader. If, um, they usually have more experience. They've been at least there for maybe three years or more in that particular grade level. So it's always a good point of reference if you do have a question about anything. Uh, in the case that, um, I guess, it's a bigger problem, maybe with a parent or something, always um, talk to your assistant principal and let your principal know um, of everything that's going on. It's good for them to always be in the of things. Uh, and it's also a great idea to know your instructional coaches if you have some available. 
um, they are there to support you and guide you and help in any way possible. So they're, they're great resources. Okay. The next one, uh, what really has helped me in my classroom and setting up, uh, first is actually just going into the, my classroom as it is empty. And um, I always kind of visualize what I, where I want to put my centers, but it's always good to ask your first here, what centers do I need to have? Because especially with the older grades, you are not required to have as many centers. So find out what you have to have first before you overwork and get like, all your ideas out. Um, so ask first what you need, and then <coughs> just kind of, you know, get a general idea where your centers will fit better in your room. For example, for me, my my science center is always closer to a window where, you know, I, I do like a natural tree that I change every season. So it makes sense to the kids as they're observing outside. They make a lot of those connections. The same thing for art, you want to put in your sink so that we can have, you know, availability to clean brushes and stuff like that. So it's always a good idea to preview your room before you start moving things around. Um, also, check your classroom. Sometimes you can inherit things <laughs> from previous teachers that can be very helpful, and that way you don't have to go out and spend so much money. Or just ask if anybody's willing to donate anything, and sometimes they're just more than happy to get rid of things. So they'll, they'll help you out that way. Um, also, make a list. Um, it's really important, because I spent so much money my first year, I almost regret it. <laughs> So make a list of what you really need, like tags, um, folders, like things that are necessities. And then go to the teacher store and, and ask like in the front, you know, hey, where can I find just these things? And then that helps you from, um, you know, spending extra money that, that you could be saving. Um, also ask in your office what you can get from them, because sometimes they can give you a lot of supplies and stuff for free. So just ask. Always help. <laughs> Uh, also have a game plan, and once you're ready to go, ask some friends or family to go help you set up, and it'll go so much faster. And um, really, once you have a game plan going on, it, it'll really help you. Uh, also do your classroom before all of the staff development days start, because usually those days are just planning and um, just housekeeping, really, with, uh, with the school and training, so you really don't have a lot of time to set up. Uh, how long does the list of the question? Um, how long does it take me to set up? I usually go in maybe about a week before we go back, and I'll finish it maybe in three to four days. But I do my preview, previewing of my actual classroom and see what I want to change maybe today, um, and kind of clean out things that I don't need anymore. And it takes me maybe about a, a week to get everything done. <laughs> yes, I, I, I buy a lot. I have a ladder <laughs> in my classroom. That's always a good thing to have handy. I need to go see. Um, on the next one, um, general advice for for all new teachers: don't stress out. I know it's, it's easy to say, but um, ask for help. Um, don't over stress out or over analyze things. Sometimes we want to get everything accomplished by ourselves, but you know. People are willing to help you if you're just willing to ask sometimes. So ask for help. You don't lose anything by doing that. Um, also observe other teachers in their team in action. You can learn a lot from their experience and, and their teaching style even though it might not be yours. So you can learn how to modify and you know make it work for your classroom. Uh, become familiar with the, uh, the people in your campus. Uh, all the rooms, uh, the teachers, so if someone doesn't go and introduce you to everyone, then, you know, kind of introduce yourself. That's always a, a good way to kind of get out of your comfort zone, but it, it speaks a lot about you, uh, being a new member of the, you know, your, the, the, the school, and you just go out there and kind of introduce yourself, and sometimes they're more than willing to help you out or give you some advice. Uh, within the first week, uh, I would recommend gathering all your students' information into a roster and creating kind of like an emergency contact list. That's always like a good go-to reference point for me. Especially, I mean, I work with pre-K, so I have to have an emergency contact list, and that really helps uh, for for quick phone call reference or anything. 
and three people that I will always call for help or is always a nurse, the librarian and the custodian. So make sure you know them. They are like lifesavers. I kid you not. <laughs> uh, any other questions? I'll be more than happy to answer them. I don't really have much. And I have one more slide. So things I wish I knew before I I became a teacher is to do all your pre your pre planning with time. I can't, we can't stress that enough. Uh, July is the perfect time to start. So usually by next week I'll start planning on getting my files together for the first six weeks of school at least. And then I kind of talk it over with my team when we get together during the summer and we kind of come to a consensus of what we want to do. Um, also reading books uh, on the area of interest or areas that you think you need more help or sharpening your skills. That's always a good idea to kind of read over or get, you know, just ask around some of the other teachers. Uh, also check your dollar stores first for stickers, tape, um, back to school deals. Uh, go with the cheapest first. It, it, you have to always kind of be <laughs> on the thrifty side, if you will. Um, I usually check Walmart, Target, Staples. Um, they usually have good uh, supplies uh, back, to school, back to school, um, especially in blue and folders. Um, so go like towards the last week of July, the first week of August, before the big rush comes with all the parents. So you can get a lot of stuff for a good price. And I was just talking about in glue, scissors, crayons, pencil boxes, homework folders. I usually buy a whole set just so I can make sure they all have the same thing. And just consumable. They, they run out. So regardless if they bring it in, they will run out. So stock up with it. Uh, so any other questions, I'll be more than happy to help with. Uh, no, thank you, Nelly. Uh, Dr. S I think Dr. Smith just joined us. I don't, he's our department chair in curriculum and instruction, oh. so he's here, and I think he just typed in, great to see you're doing so well. Oh, thank you so much. I hope you remember him. <laughs> yeah. Yes, yes, I do. Yes, oh, good. good. And then Audrey says, I always do the Staples one cent deals. What's that? I always run out of glue. Okay, good to know. Yes. And yeah, they do good deals. Marinthia, <laughs> good. I think for time we'll just go to Marinthia. She's back. And um, let me just scroll back. Thank you. Let's give Nellie a virtual round of applause. Okay, we're ready. Hi, my name is Marinthia McElroy. Um, I'm currently about to, well, I'm in my fifth year of teaching as soon as school starts. I've been teaching at Come On Montessori for the past five years. I was in undergrad at UTA. I graduated with honors and I'm back now pursuing a master's degree. And currently, I have an ESL certification. I'm certified to teach early childhood through fourth grade. And I also have a Montessori teaching cert certification for early childhood to fourth grade. So what has gone well? Okay, so I found it beneficial to observe students as a teacher. I've realized that um, notes can be taken. It doesn't have to be extensive, but just something uh, for me to refer to when I go back, when I plan lessons or when I plan to meet with the student. Uh, this helps me to recognize um, the social needs of students and academic needs as well that affect how they do, how their performance is in my classroom. I've learned to appreciate the Daily Five. This is a book that provides strategies that I've used in my classroom in addition to Montessori teaching techniques. And you'll hear me say Montessori, and this is a type of teaching that is used, it's basically used to educate the child overall and they are in charge of their their learning. We follow the child and it's geared toward helping them to be more independent learners. But in addition to the Montessori curriculum, I also teach traditional, what Forward ISD requires me to teach. So the Daily Five helps me to 
meet with my small group readers, my small reading group. It helps me to give them activities that they need as far as reading to self, reading to a partner, listening to reading and writing. And they also have a website. It's www.thetwosisters.com backslash the daily five. I've also found another tool that's um, successful in my classroom called Nihau. It provides valuable learning tools that support literacy development. Um, specific materials um, they give with this type of um, learning are alphabet strips and magnetic letters. They can also be used and they're implemented to teach with phonics lessons to help them build alphabet knowledge as well. I've also found Scottish Rite to have a dyslexia a literacy lesson support plan that gives helpful um, helpful learning activities for reading, handwriting, spelling, listening, and comprehension. And they have a website. It's www.ts rhc.org. Okay, my general advice, I would say be patient. It's so easy to uh, be overwhelmed and you're trying to get everything accomplished as a first year teacher. Everything, it takes time for you to develop your classroom. It takes time for you to develop your teaching techniques. It takes time to figure out who you are as an educator. Stay connected. It helps to uh, collaborate with peers at your school, to stay in contact with people you've graduated with, and even your professors. It helps um, be a, a learner. Never stop learning. Keep your eyes open. Sometimes your students might be your greatest teacher. And seek guidance. Uh, your principals, they're busy, but they, they'll they make time to talk with you and to help you if you ever need any type of assistance that stems beyond what you're, what you're handling at, with your students academically all the way to um, how you may collaborate with your colleagues. Your principal can help you as you find out who you are as a teacher. Be organized. It saves time and it saves money. Um, I know my first couple of years, I could be digging, looking for something that I didn't store properly, and I go out and have to buy it. And then a month or, or a week later, I find it because I didn't put it back where it belongs. It breathes. You know, I expect to know everything. You are a professional. You you were taught strategies and techniques for teaching your students, but you are also still a learner. I wish I had known, I wish I had known that it's important to pace myself. I feel overwhelmed with the faculty meetings, the team meetings, planning, meeting with parents, getting all of my materials ready for and prepared for daily lessons in addition to having to complete trainings. I completed my Montessori certification training during my second year of teaching. Going back and forth to Houston throughout the school year, it was overwhelming. I found out that I just have to pace myself. Um, I learned that I wish I had known that no matter what, I stick to the rules that I assigned to my classroom or that I created with my students my first year. I felt I didn't know who I was as an educator. I didn't know if it was okay for me to be um, really stern or extremely nice. I didn't know the the fine line. So I learned that all I have to do is be myself, enforce the rules and boundaries, and children will respect me. They respect me even more since I um, implement more. I just show them and tell them what I expect 
and then they rise to the occasion. Um, I wish I had known that being thrifty and adventurous would take me a long way. Um, I spent a lot of my graduation money and gift cards running to Target and Walmart and Mardell. If I had kept my money in my pocket and waited until I had actually seen my classroom to see what I may or may not need or inherit from the previous teacher, if I had um, waited to see what materials and supplies the office had in stock, I could have saved a lot of money and used that cash to buy other materials for my classroom or to save. I also wish I had known that each year would be a better year because as you go, you learn new strategies and techniques. You grow as an educator. You take with you every mistake you've made and you use those to transform you. And they, those mistakes are what will be used to transform you and help you to become a, a greater teacher for the next year. Um, set up to start the year. So as soon as you see your classroom, I, would, I know I personally took pictures of my classroom so that I could know what, what my classroom was like even after I left. So I look at the pictures on my cell phone and, and visualize how I would like to change and move the furniture around. So throughout the course of a week, I would rearrange the classroom, move everything, get place everything where I would like it to be. And so when school started, I would check this plan to see if it would actually work. So if I recognize Students didn't have proper walking patterns. I adjust to suit the needs of the children in that learning environment. Uh, remember to set up with space, and that's what I just said, proper patterns and reserve areas for students to work independently. Some students you'll learn, they just, they want to find a quiet corner and read to themselves. If at that time, maybe you're doing your daily five and they just want to get away. Or you might have a crying student come in or someone who who just needs time to cool off. Just create a small place for them. Also, um, starting up, setting up for the school year, I don't label their seats because I want to know who gets along with who, which students, um, who have personalities that don't necessarily mesh well together. I want to be able to and arrange their seating so that we can have aim to have a more peaceful classroom. And also it's important to label as all you most likely already know, label their cubbies at the lockers because on the first day of school, if you are teaching small children, you'll have to answer the question nearly a thousand times before the morning's over. Where do I put this where do I put my child things or where does this go? Or where does that go? I also post notes in the hallway above their lockers, letting parents know specific instructions about where materials go or what their child is expected to do as soon as they get into the classroom or even um, if when I have my sign-in sheet, I leave a note above it up high so that parents can see it because on the first day or even the first two days, you're overwhelmed with parents who warn you wanting more information. Uh, get parent communication started before school starts. I generally send home a letter in addition to the one that the, our, my kindergarten team sends home. It lets them know information about me as an educator and my goals. It lets them know information about me as a person and my interests that's still not outside of the classroom briefly. Um, along with this letter, I also send a small project they can do together, and it serves as an icebreaker for the first day of school. And it also, um, I post them in the hall so that the children can see something they take ownership of uh, before we even get into the, into the school year. So I sent, the last year I sent home a paper doll and parents were free to decorate them with their child, showing their child's personality or interest. And 
they were so proud. So when they came back on the second day of school after they introduced their paper dolls to see it posted, they like to take ownership. Um, in addition, with the letter, I also sent home a I sent home a note with parents requesting emergency contact information, also a, a student survey so that I can know who has certain food allergies or needs that their personality requires. I also sent home a note that parents fill out. It lets me know how students get home the first day of school. And if it changes beyond that, I can know the the routine or the idea for how that child is expected to get home each day. Because I teach kindergarten, these students don't necessarily always know this information. So, and this is all I have. And I apologize for being rushed. I've never done a a webinar before. So, I thank you for your time. You guys are all doing wonderful. Thank you. Do you guys, does anyone have any questions for Marinthia? Uh, we just want to congratulate you for going into your fourth year. That's amazing. And like I said before, time flies, doesn't it? And um, so that's great. Okay. I think fourth year and on is considered a veteran teacher. So you're now a veteran teacher. Yeah. I'll then, be in this far. <laughs> that's great. Um, Remind 101 is a great way to stay in contact with parents. So. Okay, good, and that's text messaging, correct? We'll go to Ashley. Thank you, Marincia. Good. You can just see press talk, and we'll turn it over to Ashley. She is, so our first two um, panelists were, are in the master's degree program in literacy studies, and our next two panelists are in, also in the master's program in MBE, so they may mention make mention of that. So I'll turn it over to you, Ashley. Okay, thanks. Uh, let me know if the ceiling fan behind me begs anybody. Oh, that's okay. Um, Ashley, turn your microphone up just a bit before we go on. Just if you, it's above the talk button. There you Is go. Is that better? Okay. Um, I'm Ashley Andrews, and I teach pre-K three-year-olds and four-year-olds. Um, I'm ESL certified, and I have some uh, gifted and talented hours, but I'm not certified. Um, I graduated in UTA, or from UTA in 2011, and I am currently enrolled in the Mind, Brain, and Education Master's Program at UTA. Um, and for those of you that don't know, it's pretty much, I'm getting to look at the neurology behind how we learn and how we teach, and it's a great, fun program. So to get started, the first thing you need is a job when you become a teacher. So how do you get a job? Um, some people sub. I was a teacher assistant or a, a paraprofessional for two years, um, and the experience really matters. Um, and if you can't get a job within the district, you can just volunteer. Um, I've listed three places where I volunteered in the DFW area, and they were great programs. To, um, to volunteer for. The Arlington Public Library has a literacy house that was a lot of fun to volunteer at. So once you get your job, the first thing I highly recommend is to get organized. And this is a picture in the PowerPoint of my planner. And I could not live without this planner. Um, oh, I kind of jumped ahead of myself. But anyway. Um, it's got my calendar, it's got notes in it, it keeps everything organized. Um, so once you have your lesson plans ready, I would color code. I color code my assessments. Um, I have blue is for my three-year-old, yellow is for my four-year-old. And um, I color code and I staple and I always keep them in one place. Um, while I'm testing, I keep them in a drawer by my desk. And then when it's not testing, I put them in a filing cabinet and I keep it all together, and that's, that's number one, is to keep my assessments in one place. I, um, Dr. Susan, I tried a clipboard, but because I had too many papers, like, it didn't, it didn't work out for me very well. <laughs> but that is a good advice. Some people can, um, can really use them. Um, my second piece of advice is not to panic. You have been trained. You are a professional. 
Um, you know what you're doing. Whether you think that you don't know, you do know. Um, trust in your knowledge. Trust in yourself. Um, stick to your schedule. Um, you set up a – I would put my schedule together in the summer. And, you know, you start right first day of school with that schedule. Stick to it. If you change, you may get confused. Um, your kids will get thrown off because um, they don't know what's coming next. So just stick to your schedule. Also, I would stick to your rules. Um, if you're changing your rules, the kids think that maybe they don't apply, maybe they don't matter. Um, but you can do it. Yes, kids like routines. Um, you can handle anything. Anything that, even when on those days where you're like, oh my god, I can't handle this anymore, you really can. Um, and if you do need help and you do get that sense of overwhelm, just stop, run down the hall, and go and ask somebody. You can ask anybody in, in your school building for help, and they, if they don't know, they could probably point you to somebody who could. So you're not alone when it comes to teaching. There's lots of people out there. You can even go find blogs or Pinterest for ideas. You're not alone out there. Um, my other thing that I absolutely love is keep it simple. I love my daily five. Um, for me, the daily five is we have um, a listening to reading, we have working on writing, library time where they sit and, you know, they're pre k so they're not necessarily reading, but they're spending that time with books. Um, and word work is it's really more like letter work. And then they have um, some time with me where we work and focus on um, whatever skill that needs to be developed for that group that's at my table. Um, the reason I like the Daily Five so much is if you look, I do, I have them working on books or journals for their writing time. So really, I only have to change up two groups a week. Um, the Daily Five is supposed to be daily, but for pre-K I find it a lot easier that, to just rotate the groups um, once, in, once in the day so that all kids hit all five within the week. Um, so really you only have to plan for to change out the group two groups, which saves you a lot of time, a lot of energy to focus on whatever else you need to focus on, especially if you need to change up your curriculum and teaching for different kids. Um, for math small groups, I kind of do the same thing. Um, I keep it simple. So we need some basic skills in pre-K. We need counting, sorting, math, number recognition, shapes. So that's my base, and then I can just set up activities for each of those groups based on whatever standard we're working on. Um, addition and subtraction, I put fours only for the end of the year because you don't, you're really not going to work on addition and subtraction with your three-year-olds. So that's what that little note is. So that's kind of how I do my small groups. Um, for behavior management, I give the kids a folder. And this is an example of an actual calendar that I send home to parents. And I just write, if they had a rough day, you know, we're not following directions, I just write a little note to parents and send it home. Um, and the parents will sign it every day, hopefully. Um, I also, in the classroom, will use positive reinforcement. And so that really helps. You compliment one child and, um, the others who are like, oh, you know, she complimented him, I'm going to do it too. Um, if, there, if that's not working, you know, a verbal warning, like, you know, don't forget, that's not how we behave, or, um, you know, don't you want to get treasure box? And Dr. Sinus is asking me about treasure box. Treasure box is if they do not get any signs in their calendar. So if they don't get a, didn't follow directions or whatever sign on their calendar, and they get all smiley faces or stickers for the week, I give them a little prize. They get to um, come up to a, a box that has various little toys that have been donated to me or um, McDonald's or you, go, you can go to garage sales and buy like a box of McDonald's toys, super cheap. Um, and I fill up a box of those and the kids and come pick up their reward. And that's really good for teaching them kind of uh, inhibition controls and not waiting for their award. So that's why I like treasure box. It also links up to the brain and psychology, and that's what my master's is in. Um, another thing for teachers to kind of survive, um, leave work at work. I know sometimes you have to bring stuff home, but I, I have found that if I just eat and work at school and I get to just leave it there, I feel so much better. 
Um, so allow yourself, you know, that time. If you if you need your lunch break, take your lunch break. Um, if if you don't, if you have a lot of stuff you need to knock out, then knock it out. Um, to me, it's so much easier to just do it on my lunch break. Um, also, find a mantra to help you get through the difficult days. Um, it doesn't matter. I have on the right, I have mine, uh, the serenity prayer that helps me get through really difficult days. You just take a minute, breathe, say your mantra, read it. Um, I also found taking a family picture to work with you. So those of you that can see my video, here's my, I, there's earlier with my old planner, and this is mine for next year, see so if you can and get in there. So here's mine for next year. And then the front cover, I have my wedding photo. So that way my husband is with me every day, and um, it's, it's just reassuring. It's, it's bringing a little something from home to school. Um, and where did I get my plans? It's right here. It's at erinconvery.com. I don't know if you can see that. Maybe Dr. Simmonson can write it in. It's gonna get, there we go. erinconvery.com. Now, you know, I'll just type it in here real fast. Um, I love her. Um, she makes lesson plans for teachers. Um, so it's a calendar, it's a lesson planner. I love it. Check it out on her website. Absolutely love it. Best thing, best way to organize everything, as I mentioned earlier. Um, so anyway, back to my breathing. Um, just, you know, for your own sanity, keep, keep things separate and just remember to relax. We get worked up and worry about our kids, but relax. It'll be, it'll all be okay. Um, and also relax while you're in your classroom, not just at home. Have fun with your kids. Um, I know we can get bogged down. Oh my God, my test scores aren't going to make it. Um, but you know, if you're having fun, if you're teaching, your kids are going to have fun and your kids are going to learn. As long as you're relaxed, they will be relaxed. So if you're not stressed about those test scores, Hopefully they're not going to stress about their test scores either. Um, trust in your kids. Um, I know sometimes you get those rough students, those rough parents are hard to deal with, and, and it's hard to trust them. But in the end of the day, you just you just got to trust in their abilities and their instincts. Just trust them. And never forget why you became a teacher. I became a teacher because I love kids. Um, and, it's, and I love teaching. It's, it's so much fun. Um, so just at the end of the day, remember that, too. Just have fun. Oh, and that's Audrey. So thank you for letting me speak today, and I hope this helps everybody, and have a great year, and enjoy your teaching. Let's give her a virtual round of applause. Awesome. And we'll move on. We'll turn it over to Audrey, our last speaker. Thanks. And if anyone has questions, Type them in the chat window or comments or use emoticons. Okay, we'll turn it over to you, Audrey. Um, let me, actually, I need to do your slides, so go ahead. Okay, hello, everybody. Can y'all hear me? Yeah, your, your audio okay. is good. Um, all right. Just making sure. I'm sorry. I'm at a kids camp right now, so we're out in the middle of nowhere and have like almost no internet access. So <laughs> I'm like standing on one foot with one arm raised up trying to get some internet here. Um, I'm Audrey Fowler. I am, I graduated from UTA in 2011 with EC36 Generalist. Then um, for the first year after that, I was a paraprofessional in a life skills classroom. And while I was doing that, I got some other certifications. I got 4 through 8 generalists and then EC through 12 special education and my ESL supplemental. I currently teach sixth grade language arts and social studies at Marymore Elementary, which is where I did my student teaching at. And I'm currently going to graduate school at UTA because it's the best school ever in mind, brain, and education program. Um, I am going to, sorry, I am, um, sorry, I lost my spot. Special education. Okay, so I taught, I was a paraprofessional in the special education classroom for the first year, and then I
was a special education teacher for a year, and then I did sixth grade a year, and I'm going back to sixth grade for the I think year. you're cutting out a little bit, Audrey. Um, can you can hear Audrey still? The next if you haven't already. My slides are loading a little slow. Cutting out a little bit. End. Okay, that's okay. Just keep mm -hmm. going. If it cuts out Hello? quite a bit, um, can I can help me? out. Can you hear me now? Can you hear me now? <laughs> okay. Um, what we're, on, we're on how, to, so get how to get hired. That's the slide we're yeah. on now. We're Make on how. sure you're. Yes. I okay. think we're on I was just how to sure. get hired. I'm sorry. <laughs> okay. So one thing I did was make sure that your resume yes. stands out. Um, don't make it just a typical format of your resume. Uh, make sure, I would include a picture just because they like to see who they're hiring. Some people say don't do that, but I did and it worked well for me. Um, go to the school that you want to teach at and give them face-to-face -face interaction and get to know the staff. I know whenever I was applying for jobs last year, I went to several schools and went and talked to the secretary, and once I got to know them, they got me in with the principal, and I got hired pretty quickly after that. Um, also, always dress professionally. I know that some of you might be, you're about to be student teachers or you just finished being student teachers, always dress in professional wear, even though most teachers don't at their schools. It just gives a good presentation of yourself. Also, pursue every opportunity, even if you might not want it. Um, my first year, I was like, oh, I want a classroom so bad. And then once I was a paraprofessional, I realized that I really needed that year to kind of get a grasp on what kind of a teacher I was. So it's really helpful to do that other stuff. Um, several of my friends subbed for a year before finding their job. And then also student teaching. You're trying to make a good impression 100% of the time, whether you stay there or not, because those are the people that are going to give you references when you go to your other um, employers. We were required to compose a portfolio. Sorry, I was reading the comment. Okay, that's cool. A portfolio, what's that? I mean, I know what a portfolio is, but what did you include in it, like your lesson plans and stuff? Christina? You can okay. go to the next slide. Okay, Christina. good. Yeah, I think Christina and some others and mid-level put together like their exemplar sort of assignment. Okay, that's cool. Um, okay, so what has been going well in my teaching? Implementing technology in a meaningful way. That was one of the things I didn't quite get a grasp on until I started teaching that you don't just do technology just to do it, but to do it in a meaningful way. You want to try and accomplish something that you can't accomplish typically because you do have access to all kinds of different technologies that can help you collaborate and they can help you um, in, encourage learning even further. Um, Engaging students in active learning, I like for them to sit around and stare at me. <laughs> um, it helps them be engaged, it helps me be in, engaged, and it just helps all around. One of the things that I started this year was I was the UIL coordinator for our campus, and that really helps me get to know the other teachers on campus, and it helps me to get to know students from different grade levels that I'm going to have in the future. And it's a good way to like really get in, plugged into your school and care about your school even more. And the last thing is graduate school. I love graduate school. I'm like the biggest advocate for it because it has been so useful for me, especially these past couple, this past year. Sorry. Um, it helps me to stay on top of the latest research. I get to know all kinds of cool stuff about the way students learn, and it also gives me a chance to collaborate with others who are passionate about learning, like Ashley, for example, who talked before me. We got to know each other, and she's a pre-K teacher. I'm a sixth grade teacher, but we are able to share a lot of our 
ideals and a lot of things about teaching because we um, have that common passion for learning. Um, an example for a meaningful way in using technology. Okay. Um, meaningful way, like we have, see at our school we have a collaborative lab, so that helps. Um, but a lot of things like having the students share in Google Docs, AISD uses Google Docs, and so we're able to share our um, documents with each other, and students are able to work on research papers from home and different stuff like that, and that helps because they don't have to depend on somebody else. They can go and check on it on their own. Does that make sense, Deborah? Allie asks, um, how long did you teach before starting grad school? I taught for two years before starting. And I think that's what Ashley did as well. It was two years out of school. And it was enough of a break where I was really to a point where I was like, okay, I, I need to go back to school because I love school. I mean, I'm sure we all do because we're all teachers here. Um, yes, it's good to have the experience, but it's also good to help facilitate your teaching. Okay, here's some pictures of my... Yeah, you can do it, Christina. <laughs> Sorry, I, I'm a big advocate for starting it early because I'm a, I was afraid that if I waited too long, I wouldn't be able to do it. And even though your first year is hard, like, it wasn't my first year teaching, but it was my first year in sixth grade, so I was learning all different kinds of stuff. But it really, um, like, as long as you have that mentality, you can, you can take it on. And the professors are awesome and they're supportive, especially the professors at ETA. I know my lead teacher, she teaches, or she goes to school for curriculum and instruction, and the professors there are the same way as mine brain in education. Um, here's some, just some different pictures that I was going to show from my classroom that I had that I just pulled off my computer. Um, the post-it notes, that's called a gallery walk. I don't know if any of you have ever done that, but that's one of my favorite things to do. I put up different passages from stories and articles that represented different um, author's purpose and gave my kids sticky notes. They each had a different color, and they were in groups, and they would go around it put there what they thought the author's purpose was for. And what else? I have one of my favorite things to do is like kind of a summary of what we did. I'll give them a teaching tweet, and I tell them, you know, in 124 characters or less, tell me what you learned today. And so they just very briefly put a sentence on what they learned, and that way I know that they were listening and that they know what I was talking about. Um, and then those are just some different social studies things that I threw in there. Language arts is probably my favorite thing to teach, which is funny because I was horrible at it in school. <laughs> but something I learned was that we had, um, that what I'm good at, I'm not good at teaching. So like I was always good at math, but I don't teach math very well. Okay, we can go to the next slide probably. Can y'all still hear me or am I cutting out? No, we can hear you. It's just cutting out a little. Yeah, you're good. Okay, setting up your classroom. I put make sure you go from small. You can go from small group to whole group really easily. That was one thing. Whenever I first started, my desk weren't really set up appropriately to accommodate that. And then also, don't worry if it's not perfect and the kids won't notice. <laughs> I know you can see those pictures on Pinterest and get a little intimidated by all the different stuff that they have. Um, but don't worry. The kids aren't going to say, oh my gosh, your room is a mess. <laughs> um, one of the things is have a certain place for everything so the kids know where to get it and where to return it. 
if you have like 20 different places for your glue bottles, you're not going to have glue, but like the first two weeks. And what was it? Oh, that was a bulletin board that was in my classroom. And I had, I created trailers for the books that my students were reading. And I let them scan the QR codes and watch the trailers to decide which book to choose to be in that book group. Does that make sense? And my last thing was use your space wisely. That was one of the things that I had trouble with. Like I said, the same thing with moving from whole group to small group easily. You want to make sure that all your space is being used and all of it's used wisely. I wish that we could have just these huge classrooms, but we really don't. <laughs> you can go to the next slide. Sorry, the slide is loading. Okay. Are there any questions so far? This one is I've been trying to read them. Graduate going school. On. It says graduate school for mind brain education. Okay. So um, I was just going to tell you a little bit. Ashley, you can chime in and talk to you. Um, mind brain and education has given me the science behind. Being an educator, that was one thing that Ashley said earlier. It's helped me to individualize education for my students. It gives me a deeper understanding of teaching. It's changed the way that I teach lessons. I learned that by, you know, creating discovery-based lessons and discovery-based learning that the students really get more out of it. I know that that's something that you learned before, like in undergrad, but in graduate school you really get to look at, like, the brain and, like, what actually happens, the chemistry behind it, or biology, I guess, is the correct word. Um, and I've even brought into the classroom one of my students' favorite lessons. We were talking about spatial reasoning, and I was showing them what part of the brain you use for spatial reasoning, and they just thought it was the coolest thing ever. They referred to it for the rest of the year. <laughs> It was really, like, it wasn't that big of a deal, but just, like, telling them that little part, they really enjoyed it, and they enjoyed being, they felt like they were grown-ups. <laughs> um, and that picture is a picture. We get to, uh, there's the Fort Worth Museum of Science and History, and they have a research learning center there where we were able to do some experiments this past semester, and that was, like, a really awesome experience going and, you just constantly get kids coming in and you do experiments and you get to run your experiments on them, which is really cool. All right, you can get to the next one. Oh, that's okay. I think we'll skip I think this I'm one and go sorry. to the like next one forever. if that's okay. Um, yeah, that's I'll go to the last one. Okay. Okay, my best advice. I'll just give you like the top three. <laughs> Um, create an environment that is comfortable for both introverts and extroverts. That was one thing that I've learned in graduate school and that I've learned about myself. You know, some kids, they don't work well in groups. They'd rather work by themselves. Don't be afraid to, like, give them that option to work by themselves. And learn from others and share your own thoughts because they are valuable. Even if you are a new teacher and it's your first time teaching, Older teachers want to hear from you, and you can use their advice as well, but don't be afraid to share your own thoughts. And the last bit of advice that I'm going to give is give your students choices in their education if they're old enough to make those choices. Obviously, it has to be developmentally appropriate, but um, I always give my students like a choice board, something that they can share with others so that I'm not sure. So something that they can pick from so that they kind of feel like they have their own choice in their learning. Okay. And I think that's all. And y'all can read that later if you want to. Yeah. Okay, great, Audrey. I think for time we'll wrap up, but let's give her a virtual round of applause or happy face or whatever. And um, thank you so much. And thanks for everyone for joining by your various tools, phones, um, laptops, whatever, whatever you join by. Thank you.
Remember, we're also doing another <laughs> webinar on dyslexia, and that will be August 2nd. And so let's go ahead and um, type something you learned today or something you hope to try or anything else that stood out to you from the presentation. So any feedback you have right now, what you learned, go ahead and type that in the chat window, something you learned, want to know, hope to explore. I just want to also um, share a bit about uh, the MBE program. There's a variety of courses. I believe it's pretty hands-on. They have an EEG lab. Um, and I believe y'all both took an EEG class recently, right? So there Students actually spend time in the lab, and students also work in various places, like you said, the Fort Worth uh, Museum of Science. So when I say work, I mean do research. So great. And, and so for more information on the MBE program, you can contact Dr. Mark Schwartz, and his email's right here. You can also just look it up on the UTA website and check that out. So thanks to everyone for attending. Have, we hope you have a great weekend and summer, and we hope to see you again on this series. If you have any questions, you can contact me, Peggy S. at uta.edu. Please like our Facebook pages. We have curriculum and instruction and the digital um, community building page. But if you go to the curriculum and instruction page, that's our main page right now to get information. So we thank you for joining us. If you have any comments or questions, um, type them in the chat window, otherwise I'm going to stop